hello student uh, let's uh, start with lecture number 1 from the unit 3 and uh, up till in the previous part we have discussed the unit number 1 and the second here in the unit 1 we have discussed the basics of compiler and in the first unit only we have started the discussion regarding the phases of the compiler in the first unit only we have discussed the first phase of compile that is a lexical analysis in the second unit we have discussed the uh, second phase of compiler that was the syntax analysis phase and different techniques to do the syntax analysis now we are starting with the unit number 3 and our unit number 3 title says semantic analysis and the sdt where the sdt stands for syntax director translation so today we are going to discuss the things related with the semantic analysis only so in the next lecture we will start with the discussion of syntax director translation now you already know what exactly mean by the phases of compiler that number of times we have discussed so phases of the compiler are nothing but the what you can say the logically interrelated operation that take the source program in one form or that take the source program in one representation and produce the output in another representation or the produce the output in another form so likewise we can uh, uh, describe the phases as a different stages in the processing of source program by the compiler and initially compiler take your source program as a input and then according to the different phases suppose for example if you see the first phase so first phase take the source program as a input and produce the tokens likewise each phase of the compiler is having particular role that we are going to discuss and related with the first two phases already we have discussed so phases can be described as a uh, different kind of interrelated operations during the processing of source program or different stages in the processing of source program or you can also consider the phases as a number of sub processes uh, while you are processing your source program by the compiler where you know the compiler convert your higher level language program into the lower level language program. so mainly there are the uh, two phases of the compilation analysis phase and the synthesis phase and we already know the analysis phase consists of the three main phases these are nothing but the lexical syntax and the semantic analysis so as we have discussed each phase take the input from its previous stage and feed its output to the next phase of compiler so you can see here the first phase of compiler take the input in the form of source code and it produce the output as a tokens you can see here then second phase of compiler take the input in the form of the tokens and produce the output as a parse tree also already regarding these phases in details we have studied okay so mainly the lexical analyzer role is nothing but the production of the tokens detection of the lexical errors etc and role of the syntax analyzer is nothing but the to check whether sentence or the sen uh, expression given it is a syntactically correct or not and detect the various kind of syntactical errors and now we are in the third phase that is the semantic analyzer we have to discuss okay so uh, if you see the phases of compiler in that lexical analysis already we have discussed in details you can see it's in arrow i have shown you whenever the parser or the syntax analyzer request the token to the lexical analyzer lexical analyzer read the source program and send the tokens it first produce or identify the token and send the tokens to the parser then syntax analysis also we have discussed syntax analysis take the tokens from the lexical analyzer and while doing these different phases also refer the one data structure that is a symbol table so symbol table generation start during the lexical analysis phase and in the next phases of the compiler each phase add the different information in this symbol table so parser or the syntax analyzer take the input from the lexical analyzer the token and it produce the parse tree or the syntax tree so if the parse tree or the syntax tree for particular sentence or the expression can be generated then we can say there is a no syntactical errors okay if the parse tree or the syntax tree cannot be generated for the particular expression with the help of the given uh, available grammar 
then we can say there is a syntactical error in your program so likewise these details of these phases already we have discussed in the previous lecture so our discussion today is nothing but the related with the semantic analysis phase of the compiler okay now uh, you can you know the source program which is being written by the programmer it is available in the different higher level languages okay so it might be possible that the source program which you have written that source program can be lexically correct or that source program can be a syntactically correct but it may happen that your source program is not semantically correct so what exactly mean by the semantically correct and what exactly mean by the semantic analysis so as you can see here the semantic analysis is the third phase of compiler and uh, its main role to check whether the programmer has written the code with some valid meaning or not so the programmer who is writing the code in the higher level language now that code can be a lexically correct means tokens all tokens are can be valid it can be also uh, written with the proper structure it can means we can say it is a syntactically also correct but it might happen it also need to check in the next phase of compiler whether that particular sentence expression which you have written whether it is having some valid meaning or not so here you can see the cement so you know to check whether your expression program or sentences which you have written whether it is having some valid meaning or not you know to check that there is a utilization of semantic analysis phase so if your program is not semantically correct then you get the different kind of semantic errors when you compile the program so what are the different semantic errors which is detected with the help of the semantic analysis that we will see so here i have written you can see the semantic analyzer take the output of the syntax analyzer so output of the syntax analyzer is a parse tree so semantic analyzer take the input as a parse tree and check whether it is a semantically means whether it is a meaningful whether it is a semantically correct or not or whether it is a meaningful or not so to check that particular thing that is the work of the semantic analyzer now how the semantic analyzer will do that thing so semantic analyzer also generate the another parse tree or the syntax tree and that is called as a modified parse tree or the annotated parse tree so if the semantic analyzer can successfully generate the annotated parse tree or the modified parse tree then we can see that particular expression or sentence is semantically correct means particular sentence or expression is having some valid meaning so during the semantic analysis also semantic analyzer has to take the help of the symbol table to get to get the information related to the different kind of symbol its type name etc so then whatever the output generated by the semantic analyzer that is given as the input for the next phases of the compiler that we'll see in, uh, when we we'll finish the semantic analysis so as you have you have already got the concept what exactly role performed by the semantic analyzer so the main role performed by the semantic analyzer is nothing but here for the particular source program written by the programmer in higher level language the role of the semantic analyzer is to check whether that program is meaningful or not whether it is a semantically correct or not so how and if it is not semantically correct then different kind of semantic errors will be get generated so which are that semantic errors related to the semantic analysis that we are going to see now generally semantic analyzer uh detect the various kind of errors so some of the errors uh, we are going to see here so during the semantic analysis phase different kind of errors appears so this type of errors generally get detected at the compiler so some of the semantic errors can be here you can see the first kind of semantic errors can be incompatible incompatible type of operands now as we have seen the main role of the semantic analyzer is to check whether sentence is a meaningful or not it is a, whether it is a semantically correct or not so in case of that the first and the major role perform related by uh, perform by the semantic analyzer in case of that is nothing but to check type compatibility or we can say to do the type checking that is considered the main role performed by the semantic analyzer so using the type checking semantic analyzer can uh, decide whether a sentence is a semantically correct or not whether a sentence is meaningful or not now what do you mean by the type checking now for example if you have written the particular 
sentence like this or declaration like this int a equal to s and d okay int a equal to s and d now you can see here you have declared the a and it's a type as a integer and you are trying to assign value to that integer as a string so here the type compatibility is not matching means here semantic analysis will do the type checking and it will, it will check whether type compatibility of operand is there or not now this you can see this variable a is a type of integer and you are trying to assign it the string means it is not possible in case of for example c language you cannot assign the string to the integer variable now if you do this kind of things in the program you will definitely get the same kind of errors and that errors being considered as semantic error so this is nothing but the type checking and checking uh, of the type compatibility so here this kind of error which you will get is nothing but called as the incompatible type of the operands incompatible type of the operand means what the type of this variable a you have declared as a int and you are trying to assign it the value as a string so this is nothing but the incompatible type of operand so this particular uh, variable is type of integer and you should assign it value only the integer understood so if you don't assign it the value as a integer then it is considered as a incompatible type of the operand now second kind of errors which comes under the semantic error category is the undeclared variable so sometimes what happen when you write the program in that program you try to utilize the variable which you are not declared so that error also comes under the category of semantic errors and to check this kind of things is the work of the semantic analysis also when you are utilizing the two functions calling function and the call function and suppose in the calling function you have the two parameters and in the call function you have three parameters so this mismatching of the parameters is also detected by the semantic analyzer and if you do this kind of mistake then that is considered as semantic errors so with the example you will see this now here you can see the first uh, kind of error which is being detected by the semantic analyzer as a semantic error is use of non initialized variable now if you see this fragment of code now in this fragment of code you can see you have declared the variable i and in the function f you can see uh, you have utilized the variable t here now in this function t is not declared still you are utilizing that so here i have mentioned in this code t is undeclared and that is why it will show you the semantic error so if you try to utilize some variable which you are not declared then that comes under the category of semantic errors and that detection of semantic error is work of the semantic analyzer okay so another kind of semantic error here you can see the type related with the type uh, second kind of error is the type incompatibility so that already i had told you uh, checking the type compatibility okay now here as i told you in the example int a and you are trying to assign the string variable to this integer variable so the type string and int are not compatible okay so if you want to uh, assign the value uh, uh, to this variable a then that should be the integer value only that should not be string so if you want to uh, declare the uh, this hello then you should utilize the data type as a char like this kind of things so this is the uh, example of type incompatibility okay so this kind of things also detected as a semantic error by the semantic analyzer then errors in the expression like if you write the expression like this like uh, okay you can see here you have declared the string s as a s and d and here in the int a 5 plus s now you cannot do the addition of string and the addition of uh, integer okay so this is also the come under the category of semantic error so here you can see the operator does not support the argument of type string okay so additional operator don't support you the addition of uh, integer variable and the string so this kind of mistake usually happens from the programmer and detection of that kind of uh, mistake as a error as a semantic error that is done by the semantic analyzer to the compiler so uh, another kind of error we can see here with the example not matching of actual parameters with the formal parameters okay 
now here you can see uh, the here the uh, this is the uh, you can see the called function this is the called function okay so this is the calling function okay this is the calling function and in this calling function you have some actual parameters now whenever this function will go uh, this uh, code will be detected by the compiler the function sum will be get called so this is your call function now here in this call function you are receiving the three parameters here from this uh, calling function you are sending the three parameters or the argument but you have to receive that three arguments or the parameters here you are just having the two arguments or the two parameters so this is not the matching of actual arguments with the formula so if here you are sending the three arguments here you should also have the three arguments to receive that okay so if you if the programmer does this kind of mistakes then that is also being detected under the semantic analyzer as a semantic errors so from these different kind of errors you must have got the what is the functionality of the role performed by the semantic analyzer phase of compiler which is nothing but the third phase of our compiler so here you can see the semantic analyzer uh, take the particular uh, input from the previous phase as a parser and try to process it by generating the modified parser and if the modified parser get generated successfully then we can say there is a no semantic error so these things we i have written here the semantic analysis check whether the parser constructed follows the rules of language so whatever the parse tree that is a modified parse tree generated by the semantic analyzer it will semantic analysis check there whether that parse tree constructed according to the rules of language or not so if that parse tree will not be considered according to the rules of language then definitely you will get the different kind of errors here so here for example assign of assignment of values between the compatible data types and adding the string to the integer this is against the language rules okay this is against the language rule so if this kind of things are there in your program then definitely the modified parse tree cannot be get generated and these things will be get reflected in the that particular modified parse tree and if the modified parse tree will not get generated definitely the semantic error will be shown there so also semantic analyzer has to keep the track of different kind of identifiers or the variables and the type of that identifier variables okay whether the identifier or the variables are declared before the use or not like this so if the identifier or the variable are not declared before the use then definitely the undeclared variable uh, kind of error is generated by the semantic analyzer so semantic analyzer output is nothing but annotated syntax to the modified parse tree as output here you can see which is given to the next phase of compile and this annotated parse tree or the modified parse tree can be generated one day there is a no semantic error in your program so here you can also see the semantic analysis check the semantic consistency or meaning of the code it uses the syntax tree of the previous phase along with the symbol table to verify that the given source code source code is a uh, semantically consistent or to verify that given source code is a uh, well having the valid meaning so it also check whether the code is a uh, conveying some appropriate meaning whether the code is meaningful or not so for that it check the different kind of things like it check for the type mismatch it check for the type compatibility of operands it check for the function call with the proper or improper arguments it check for the declare variable or the undeclare variable like this so another example you can see here the float x 20.2 we have declared here and the float y equal to x into the 30 now this is the meaningful sentence or the expression but this is not the meaningful because here semantic analyzer will uh, detect the here that 30 here instead of 30 it should be 30.0 because x data type is the float and 30 data type is the int and you are trying to store this value in the float data type y uh, in the variable y which is the data type as a float so if you want to do the multiplication of x and this 30 so it should be converted to the 30.0 so some compiler do the automatic conversion of this 30 to the 30.0 so the semantic analyzer uh, will responsible do for this uh, conversion and that is called as a type casting 
So if you write this kind of expression in your program, then definitely you get the warning and the errors. And uh, in some compiler that is in automatically type casting is done. Means 30s get converted to the 30.0 before some multiplication. If th if it is 30 is not get converted to the 30.0, if or uh, in in that case, if the or the programmer don't uh, change is 30 to 30.0 before multiplication, then definitely the errors will come because here x data type is different and the data type of 30 is different. If you want to do the multiplication of x and this, this 30 has to be converted to 30.0. So, uh, so we can see the semantic analyzer also do the work of uh, type casting also related with the uh, C compiler. This is uh, uh, this facility is available. Okay. Uh, if you write in the program uh, like this kind of sentence, and if you try to print value of y, you will get the value of y uh, printed uh, correctly. Uh, uh, it will be like uh, 600.2. Okay, so in case of that, we can say 30 is automatically get converted into the 30.0. Okay, so this is done by the semantic analyzer phase of compiler. So uh, we can say the semantic analyzer gather the different information. It do the task of type checking, etc., etc. It will do the uh, task of detection of mismatch of variable uh, types and uh, different kind of things that we have discussed. And accordingly, it will show you the semantic error. So from the discussion, we can have the summary that uh, semantic analyzer check whether the sentence or the string is uh, meaningful or not, because given sentence can be uh, lexically correct, syntactically correct, but it no, may not be a semantically correct. So this uh, the this uh, point that I'm telling you, given expression can be a lexically correct, it can be a syntactically correct, but it may not be a semantically correct. So this is the expression you can see, this is a lexically correct because if the lexical analyzer will process this, then it will generate the tokens for float as a keyword, tokens for the Y as a identifier, tokens for this symbol as a, as a operator, token for X as a variable, tokens for the Q star as a multiplication operator, tokens for 30 as a uh, constant. And this is also syntactically correct. I mean, this expression is a lexically correct, which is the syntactically correct, but this is not the semantically, the semantically correct. Why this is not semantically correct? Because 30 is the integer and X is a float. If this multiplication has to be done, the 30 has to be converted into the 30.0. So that the data type of this X and this uh, another operand will become the same. Okay, so uh, here also one more example we are discussing. Semantic analyzer gender the modifier parsley as output with some modification. So this example we are carrying, for example, you have the expression X is equal to A plus B into 50. Now in this example, you have the different variable like X, A, B, these variables you are having. And its uh, data types are given float. X, A, B data types are float. But you can see the data type of 50 is the integer, it is not float. So in this example, data type of 50 is integer, but the data type of other operand, like X, A, B, these are the all float. So in this kind, in this case, what is the role of semantic analyzer? Now consider this is the grammar given. Now for this grammar, if you see the how the syntax analyzer will work with this. So syntax analyzer simply generate this parse tree for that particular, for this particular expression using this gram grammar, okay. Now syntactically it is correct, there is no problem because syntax analyzer is generated the syntax. Now this syntax is given to the semantic analyzer, okay. But semantic analyzer will generate the uh, modified parse tree like this. Okay, this is the basic modified parse tree. Along uh, with this uh, modified parse tree, now why we are calling this modified parse tree? That we'll uh, see in the next time. Okay, but here also we can have the reference why we are calling it as a modified parse tree. Now in this parse tree, you can see uh, everything is similar, but here only the difference you can see. This 50 has to be converted into the 50.0. Okay. That is the reason this parser is considered as a modified parse. Okay, so this is the output generated by the semantic analyzer. And this is the output generated by the syntax analyzer. Okay, 
so only difference here is what semantic analyzer do the type checking here and it will determine that type of x a b is a float and type of it is integer so semantic analyzer also give you the warning or it will do the automatic type casting so this shift also need to be convert to the float or real to match the type compatibility so to make the type compatibility possible here this to make the type uh, data type of all the if, if this operation has to be performed then data type of all the variable or the operand present here data type of all uh, data type of uh, all that operand or the variable need to be same so uh, this kind of things or the this kind of warning or the error message will be shown by the semantic analyzer what kind of things that shift is having the incompatible type okay and then that 50 has to be converted into the 50.0 so that automatic type casting is done by the sum compiler so c compiler does this automatic type casting in the semantic analysis phase so this is nothing but the parse tree generated after the semantic analysis okay so this parse tree can be also referred as a modified parse tree or the annotated parse tree now here you have to just call it as a modified parse tree when why modified parse tree because this 50 is being converted into the has to be converted to the 50.0 means integer has to be converted to the real that is the reason this tree is called as a modified parse tree okay now again uh, in the syntax directed translation another uh, things uh, get added in this parse tree and after adding that different things this parse tree is uh, referred as annotated parse tree okay or you can also call it as a modified parse tree that part we will see in the next time here you just keep in mind this is considered as a modified parse tree as a output of the semantic analyzer so here you can understand the difference between the syntax analyzer and semantic analyzer for the same grammar for the given same expression syntax analyzer will generate the parse tree like this and the semantic analyzer will generate the parse tree like this everything is similar only difference is here related with the type casting where the semantic analyzer will try to make the type of the different variable same so that the type competitive com type compatibility can be done and for that purpose it does here the operation of into real convert that is this is called as a type casting done by the semantic analyzer phase of compiler now in uh, some compiler this facility is not available in that case you will definitely get the error there and parse tree modified parse tree will not get generated but in case of the c compiler automatic type casting facility is available okay so this is all about the semantic analysis phase of compiler so uh, here we can say the main role of semantic analyzer is to check whether sentence or expression written in code is meaningful or not or it perform the role of type checking or the uh, type compatibility checking so for that semantic analyzer request the uh, uh, semantic analyzer request uh, parse tree from the syntax analyzer and when the syntax analyzer give the parse tree to the semantic analyzer then semantic analyzer will try to generate the modified parse tree if the modified parse tree can be generated then it can be said there is a no semantic error but if the modified parse tree cannot be generated then semantic errors will get generated so while designing of the compiler is taking place in that when semantic analyzer is getting designed the system programmer used to mention all the rules of uh, formation of semantically correct sentence of particular language means when the uh, semantic analysis phase of c compiler is getting designed by the system programmer so system programmer has to mention all the uh, for all the rules of formation of semantically correct sentence all the rules of uh, formation of meaningful sentences there okay so when the user compile is program the compiler and in that third phase of compiler that is the semantic analyzer just check whether the user programmer has written code according to the predefined semantic rules the rules which were defined by the system programmer while designing of compiler if all the semantic rules are followed then no error will be generated after the compilation but if all the semantic rules are not followed then definitely the different semantic errors will be get generated and that will be get notified to the uh programmer and then the programmer can make the next uh, another changes more uh, rectification and then again the recompilation has to be done so that is the semantic analysis phase of compiler so next time uh, we'll go in the more details of semantic analysis phase of compiler and that part we are going to discuss as a syntax directed translation so syntax directed translation is nothing but the uh, uh it is also the it is uh, the part of the semantic analysis only 
so in details related to the semantic analysis that is nothing but uh, syntax directed translation for that uh, we will do do the discussion from the next lecture so you will go through the all the previous lectures if you have missed out so that further part can be understood okay so that's it from this lecture thank you all of you